<coughs> Hi. Um, I'm terribly sorry to uh, get between you and some beer, so uh, I will try and keep this short. Um, <coughs> so quite often uh, when I uh, give these talks, I, I, I do talks about futures and uh, all the, the cool features that are coming in later versions of Postgres. I, I've decided to do something else today because uh, we've got uh, a couple of product announcements uh, that, uh, that we're happy to make at, at this conference. So th there's going to be some uh, announcement emails coming out as well, but I just wanted to uh, explain briefly what those product announcements were and then just explain how that fits into some of the other things that uh, we do as well. So uh, uh, everything you see here is all fully open source and where appropriate is uh, in progress uh, being submitted through to Postgres core. Uh, so let's go straight on to uh, the first one uh, is uh, PG Loader. Uh, I, I'm sure that some of you have seen uh, Dimitri's presentations about uh, uh, PG Loader. Uh, you should be aware uh, by now that uh, we're now at version 3.2 of PG Loader. So uh, Dimitri's had a lot of experience at uh, making uh, the load utility very flexible. Uh, and this particular release is the point where he's managed to finally crack parallel data loading, uh, and that's why the slide says that it's up to 10 times faster. Uh, when he wrote it, originally he wrote it in Python, and there were some problems with uh, the global lock that meant that we couldn't get the parallelism to work properly. Um, so as of now, PG Loader's uh, an extremely fast load utility, and it's got so many different formats and options that I'm not even going to try to list them for you. Uh, but it's extremely flexible load utility. Uh, what Dimitri's been uh, working on in the background is that um, uh, PG Loader also does completely automated uh, conversion of MySQL and SQLite databases. So you literally just give it a log on to the MySQL system and say, convert it and it will connect to Postgres, connect to MySQL, it will copy across all of the DDL, uh, including intelligent transforms, and then it will load all of the data across as well. So we're, we're talking uh, about a single command line to convert whole databases. And so we're, this is uh, so it's not just a data load tool, it's actually a migration tool. Uh, that's also particularly important. Um, when you look at the number of uh, databases that we see in, in modern ent enterprises, if you think that the average database was going to take uh, a month of uh, manual labour to edit things, you can see that we would just never, ever get uh, adoption rates up there. But with this kind of approach, we're actually uh, going to take, rather than taking a month, we're taking uh, as long as it takes to type the command to do the migration. So given that 90% of databases are around a gigabyte in size, this is uh, firmly aimed at converting the vast majority of databases, even if it doesn't convert the, uh, the big uh, complex databases. So the next thing uh, to talk about is Barman, which is the backup and recovery manager uh, for Postgres. Uh, version 1.4 was released last month and supports uh, 9.4. Uh, it uh, fully supports multiple servers with multiple backups uh, and configurable policy management to allow you to uh, specify your backups and of course does full point in time recovery when and if you need it uh, so you can easily test what's going on. Uh, this version now does file level incremental backup uh, which is very important for, for larger installs. Uh, we've also got features there to do the backup from standby nodes as well as full compression. Uh, so Gabrielle is doing a talk tomorrow at noon 
uh, to give the full details on Barman. So uh, this is me just uh, announcing uh, this as, as part of the other announcements, really, not, uh, not to steal his thunder. So tomorrow at noon. Um, and the next one is Rep Manager. Uh, Rep Manager version 3 is uh, uh, now tagged and ready for uh, announcement. Uh, version 3, because we've completely redesigned uh, the earlier versions to take into to account the later uh, capabilities of Postgres 9.4. So uh, there is a version of Rep Manager called uh, version 2.02, .02, which supports 9.4, but that version doesn't support all of the features. Rep Manager version 3.0 uh, supports 9.3 onwards. So uh, for, for those releases, uh, we have full support for things like cascading, replication slots, uh, and you have a choice of whether to use PG base backup or rsync, uh, depending on uh, how your uh, systems are configured. Uh, this version uh, also provides fully automated failover, including a witness server. So it allows you to manage quite complex installs. Uh, so it's specifically designed to manage more than two nodes in that config. <clears throat> um, so that's uh, released today. Uh, it's just not announced on the public mailing lists yet. Uh, next thing to talk about is, of course, the BDR project. Uh, some of you have already heard uh, details about that. Uh, there's a, a full talk by Andres tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock. Uh, going into details of that project. Um, <clears throat> the project itself, uh, just in brief, uh, is it's the next generation replication project. We've already been going at this point on the BDR project for three years, so a lot of the features uh, that are in uh, 9.3 or 9.4 have actually come from the BDR project already. Uh, it's fully open source, and we've designed it as a submission to core PostgreSQL. So every single aspect of this project is being submitted to core. That doesn't mean it's automatically accepted by core. Uh, so there's been a lot of redesign work uh, and uh, sort of internal uh, reworking to get it to an acceptable form. Uh, but the emphasis that we've placed on this project uh, throughout its development is that we're aiming to not only make it a submission to core Postgres, so that in the future these features will be available to all, uh, the point is that it's working code now. Uh, so for the people that need these features, we've actually got versions uh, that you can uh, make use of right now. So BDR comes in two separate variants. Uh, the first variant is something that we're calling unidirectional replication, or UDR. And the, uh, the variant that we have here is it's Postgres 9.4 plus an extension. Uh, so it takes stock Postgres, you just plug an extension into it, and it will use the logical decoding feature uh, that we have in 9.4. And uh, when you put those two things together, you get that holy grail that we've been talking about for some time, which is logical replication. Now at 9.4, that is data only. We are not replicating DDL or sequences yet in 9.4, uh, but those two operations uh, are in full swing to make it into 9.5. I'm not going to prejudge that situation, uh, but if all goes to plan, uh, we'll get all three of those things working in 9.5. Now, the plugin itself, we're hoping, will be accepted by Core in 9.6, uh, but of course, that is yet for discussion as well. So what does UDR provide? Uh, well, the, the first feature 
is it provides zero downtime upgrade. Uh, now, that's not very useful because it allows you to upgrade from 9.4 to a later release. And obviously, there isn't a later release yet, but it works. <laughs> so, cool. So, uh, uh, but the main thing is um, we like to plan ahead. So. The, uh, the, the second feature that uh, a lot of people have been looking forward to is something that we call selective replication, and that's the idea that you can specify particular tables uh, that you would like to replicate rather than the whole database. Um, and what we've implemented is we've taken the concept from Sloney, known as replication sets, and implemented exactly that concept uh, into UDR so that you can specify particular tables to be moved across to, uh, to other nodes. Uh, there's uh, a, a great future for that uh, way of doing things in the, uh, the sense that what we all have already implemented as well is the ability to select particular types of operation that you wish to replicate. For example, to replicate inserts but not deletes, uh, which allows you to feed a data warehouse with changes from your operational system. Uh, so UDR is an extension that works now as part of the 0.9 release of the BDR project. The second variant uh, that we support in BDR is uh, what we uh, refer to as full BDR or just BDR, and that's uh, where we have a modified version of the Postgres server working with the extension. Uh, and uh, obviously, modified version of Postgres server uh, sounds like fork, uh, but that is not going to happen. Uh, what we have is code that's fully open source, all submitted to core, and um, the, uh, well, a, a lot of it is actually already in uh, 9.5, but um, there's still many things to go yet. Uh, the full plan is to allow uh, uh, very large clusters, up to 48 nodes, uh, is what we've uh, talked about in terms of support, uh, but we have already tested higher numbers of nodes uh, for working together. Uh, the design that we've gone for is uh, a fully interconnected mesh uh, of nodes, and we are replicating everything. So we're replicating the data changes, we're replicating the DDL, and we're replicating, uh, well, or, or, or I should say, we're not directly replicating sequences, but sequences work in a global manner so that it, the IDs that are allocated from a sequence never cause duplicate entries on multiple nodes. So this is full multi-master, um, and we are hoping that this will eventually get into uh, Postgres core, but please be aware that that could be 9.5, 9.6, 9.7 even, if there is going to be one. Um, so in terms of this making it into core postcodes, we could be looking at uh, possibly as many as four years from now uh, before it's a, a done deal part of, of core. Uh, because we understand that baking good software takes time, uh, the idea is that we're releasing it for your use now uh, rather than sit and talk about it for another four years. Um, so overall, by the time all of it gets in, that could be a project of up to seven years in duration, bearing in mind that we've already done three years on this project. Um, so let me just mention um, <clears throat> one last thing about that is that uh, we've got, uh, as of now, uh, four people working pretty much full-time uh, on the code, writing the manuals. Uh, we've got uh, people working full-time on QA, uh, and there's, uh, because there's a number of variants, uh, we've got quite a lot of testing to do, quite a lot of feature development, 
Um, but all of this is also available on multiple platforms in binary form. So we've got Debian installers, RPMs, it works on FreeBSD. Uh, so there's a lot of attention being paid to uh, the capability to run on multiple platforms. So it's not just the sources available, but this is actually available in a practical, usable form. Um, <clears throat> so while I have been highlighting these additional uh, products or additional tools that you can use with Postgres, I just wanted to also say that uh, we do spend a lot of time and attention uh, on features for core Postgres as well. Uh, these aren't things that we've released as separate products, they're just things that we're submitting directly into core. Uh, some of them go in quite uh, quietly. Uh, there's a couple of things that uh, are my favourites there, uh, such as uh, locked row identification. Uh, previously, when you got uh, um, lock weights in your application, it uh, used to just say, there is a lock. And uh, you sort of think, well, that's nice. Uh, now what do I do? Um, and actually, we uh, spent some time uh, looking into the detail of that and worked out how to pick out the particular detail of which uh, row had been locked. And now, if you get that error message in the log, you can actually do something in your application to, uh, to improve things. So there's some big features there, uh, like the lock scalability, for example, but there's also some very small features uh, where we're paying attention to the to the level of detail that uh, you need as application developers in order to use uh, the Postgres system. Um, <clears throat> so all of this work is fully open source and uh, explaining it to you now, uh, both to highlight the, the features of the new release, but also to explain that uh, if you do work with Second Quadrant, you can see exactly what we're doing with the money is putting that back into releasing open source code for everybody to use. So, um, beer time. <laughs>